musicians in bars getting beer. We're at the Opera House. Look who I have here. It's Paul Taskis. Hey. Hey, Paul. Tell us about your event. Uh, well, March 19th at this beautiful venue, the Opera House. I'm uh, I'm actually playing because I play in a Kiss tribute band as Paul Stanley, and uh, I'm actually also um, hosting it under a new uh, little venture I got going on called Chatterbox Events. Ca. Um, so I've taken. Uh, there you go. Right on. Tell us about uh, tell us about the event. The event this is plan. it's uh, three. It's called Tribute Night at the Opera House. Uh, we got uh, Kiss Tribute. We'll close it. Rock and Roll Over. Uh, and we have Keep the Faith. Great Bon Jovi tribute. They'll be on just before us and opening up the show. Helen Back, ACDC tribute. Right who on. are kicking ass right now in the city. Tell us about your band. Who's in your band? My band. Well, I got uh, R.C. Ricci. I'm sure you know him from Screw. He's part of Rock and Roll Over. Happy birthday, R.C. Yes. We uh, actually we were there late last night. <laughs> uh, gentleman named Khan that plays guitar. Very mysterious Khan. Uh, and Gus on drums. Right on. And so how long has that band been at it? Uh, they've been at it for about maybe four years, I believe, four and a half, and they asked me to come out uh, about three years ago. They lost their Paul Stanley, I think, and I auditioned, and I love it. It's That's the time great. of my life. I'm a huge Kiss fan, so I'm having uh, fun. That's great. Tell us about your uh, other bands or history. History? Well, I mean, I've, I've been in the scene for, uh, geez, 30 years, over 30 years. I was in a band called Flight back in the 80s. With who? Uh, Paul Sintikidis, who turned into Pavlo, I think we all know him, a uh, Mediterranean uh, flamenco player now, who sells out Massey Hall in the Danforth Music Hall. Pavlo's awesome. Yeah, and uh, we were, you know, we were flight. We won the high school yeah. star search back then. We won the Larry's Heat Wave. We had some fun. Those Larry's days were Hideaway? Good. Larry's Hideaway, 1985, I think we won the, we were 16 and 17, and we won the, the Heat Wave, I right. believe it was called. Then I think I, I was in a band a year after and won it again with Heat Score. I don't know if everyone remembers Heat Score at Tycho's band. They were fun. Right on. And who else have you enjoyed playing with over the years? Uh, you know what? After that, I think uh, in 91, we did a little side project to fund our original project. We were in a tribute band, YYZ, with a couple of different musicians, a guy named Jim Anilakos, Dave McVicker, Randy Rodriguez. Um, that was a good tribute. It was a fun tribute, man. We did Rush for a good two to three years, and those days the bars were just packed. It was fun. Yeah, I'm gonna include that video from. Uh, was that Rock and Roll Heaven? That might have been the Bedrock, the oh, old yeah, right Falcons right. Nest oh, yeah, there in yeah. Scarborough. Like I said, uh, yeah, it was an interesting yeah, I met time. John Cordick at that place. Oh, really? Yeah. Eh? yeah. Uh, okay, tell me some more then. Uh, well, okay, so more a little bit back to Chatterback. So what I'm trying sure. to create, guys, uh, you know, like, I mean, I'm, I've been a huge supporter of the music scene for the last, you know, longest time. And I always find these poor uh, bands just aren't getting enough people that uh, they should be. It's not like the old days. No, and it's too bad. I think yeah. everyone's got to wake up and start supporting these musicians that are working their asses off and spending money rehearsing buying equipment yeah. recording like I mean geez all they want to see is some people up at the front man that's all we want yeah. just want you right there at the front and uh, so what I'm trying to do I had actually the reason why this all came up I, my daughter is born with cystic fibrosis I uh, did a huge fundraiser in September called kids CF goodbye and uh, totally surpassed my expectations I had like 550 people here awesome. great night incredible yeah. night and I organized it all with my daughter and a lot of good friends so I'm taking that exact formula and I know it's not rocket science or reinventing the wheel but I'm you know one universal poster one Facebook invite all the bands pushed together right time Timing, and I'm hoping I can recreate this with this tribute night here on March 19th. Mm -hmm. And then I also I'll just put a little quick, uh, I'm going to have a homegrown night here for uh, five great indie bands from the city. Uh, it's not out yet, just give me a little time. It'll be on chatterboxevents.ca, but it's the date is uh, May 14th. It's a Saturday night, and it's at the Opera House again. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, five indie bands in a beautiful venue like this, and I hope that people come out and support it. That's awesome. And getting back to Kiss CF Goodbye, you're going to do that again this year. Oh, right? yes. Thank you very much. So September 24th. Oh, it's already booked. Second isn't it? annual, yeah. All right. And mm -hmm. your daughter gets up on stage with you and sings, is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, she's, she's awesome. She's a Wexford art student, is yeah. that? Yeah. She's in her final year. Yeah, oh, incredible school. Yeah. Those kids are so talented. Yeah, and, uh, she got up with her whole uh, class. Yeah, yeah. I wish actually you could have heard them a little better that night. Their harmonies are insane, but oh, yeah? because of the vet type of music, it's a little hard to hard hear to 10 kids. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow, it still sounded great. I got a good video of it. Yeah, you so, did. You yeah, did. yeah. So, uh, 
So tell us more about CF, uh, that, that benefit, and how that works. Well, that, I mean, you know, we made about $7,000, and that's, wow, that's nice. it actually, you know, I'll be honest with you, it could have been a little bit more, but from the very beginning, I told uh, even the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, I'm going to pay the musicians, you know, fairly. I'm going to, you know, I know people will donate time, but honestly, people deserve to get paid for their time, too. Mm -hmm. So everyone was paid well, but they all kicked ass for me. It was a, it was a great night. All the musicians that's helped funny. me out. So that's happening again. Is this uh, is this the second or second one? Second oh, annual, okay. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Story from the road. Masonic Temple is is the Toronto Road. Okay, well, is it on? <laughs> yeah, it's on, man. Uh, story from old Young stories. Street. Okay, flight. We were a bank of flight. We won the high school star search to be part of this at the old Masonic Temple. I think we were like sixteen and fifteen, and you know what? Just like the Spinal Tap movie, I can't even remember. But the dressing rooms there was like. They were scattered in the back there. It's a weird, uh, weird venue, and uh, we couldn't find the stage for real. We were in scaffolding in the back, and they're waiting for us, and we couldn't find it. And we're just dying, like we're turning every corner, and we don't know where we're going. And there's no one with us but the band. You we, didn't run into boat, did you? We, I think the sound led us to the stage, just the live, the claps. That's about it. It was crazy. All right, that's cool. You got another one though. I think you were thinking about. Ah, well, this one's kind of embarrassing a little bit, but like if you take a clip of that thing up there the balcony so in 91 I played here with flight and uh, it's a little skinny thing a little narrow uh, staircase that leads up there and I sang up there oh did you yeah yeah and now uh, it's be a little tougher to get up there I <laughs> put it that way yeah. 20 years later gained a little weight but oh, really? uh, we were skinny small, little guys back then yeah. yeah that's cool yeah so you were right up there in the office. yeah Actually, Reach, you wanted to spit blood from up there, but you can't, you can't get up there with the costume. It'd be a great spot, eh, for Simmons up there? Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. All right, cool. Okay, we'll come right back. Right on. All right, uh, Paul, was there anyone else you wanted to mention that you've uh, enjoyed working with over the years? Oh, geez. Uh, i got to mention people who have uh, been good to work with and have been good to me. Uh, guys like uh, Nick Walsh, good friend since the Larry's days, believe it or not. Really? I remember Nick... Uh, I went to see him. He must have been 13 or 14, and I remember, uh, geez, t uh, adjusting his distortion. He was just a kid. Uh, he was two years. He seemed way younger, but he's not that much younger. But man, he went on to do some good stuff. Nick's amazing, yeah. and he helped me out with Kiss CF too. He put together an all-star band for me that night with uh, Busby and uh, stuff. So that was cool. Vassos was yeah. Oh yeah, band. yeah, yeah. That's right. He was another great musician. Uh, Laurie Green. No, oh, awesome. Great people. Yeah. All good people. Uh, who else? Phil Narrow. I love Phil. Phil's what a voice, eh? Like, Phil is the man, and God, I hope I can probably get him for Kiss CF this year again also. I'm, I'm, I'm working on it, yeah. Uh, Pablo, obviously my lifelong buddy. He came in and flew in to help me out for Kiss CF. Um, a lot of great people out there, man. That's great. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for being on Musicians in Bars Getting Beer. It's been a great episode. We're right here in... Uh, hundred-year-old building at least, you know, and uh, it's, it's great that you got us in here for a, a great episode, Paul. Thanks very much. No problem. Take care, and I hope to see you all out there supporting live music. Front, at the front. Show them the front. This is where we want you. Right there, not at the back. Right behind the monitors. All right, cool, man. Thanks. Musicians and bars, get a beer. Paul Taskus. Take care. See ya. Bye. Okay, Paul, tell us more. Another rock and roll over story. Okay. R.C. Ricci, our bass player, we wanted to put on a great show in uh, in Saskatoon. We got asked to do their Spring Fest, yeah. and R.C. drove the van with all the equipment for 30 hours there and back. What right a champ, on. eh? But that's because we really wanted to bring the full show and not just uh, you know just ourselves with costumes. We brought everything, and it was that's a great, great night. So, uh, so tell me more about the Opera House then. What's going on with that show? Uh, our sponsor. Yeah, I'm happy to say Jim Beam is actually going to sponsor uh, the, the Tribute Night on March 19th. We don't know exactly what's involved, but it looks like a pair of Raptor tickets will be up to, for grabs in some fashion or another. Oh, that's and, cool. And uh, I'm working on it. But uh, just come that night, and uh, hopefully everyone will have a chance to win something. What night is that? March 19th, Saturday night, Tribute Night at the Opera House. All right, buddy. Thanks. Thank you. You can just catch a glimpse. Is this your YouTube channel? Oh yeah, we killed it. So that's when? 
That's 91, 92-ish. And the band's YYZ? YYZ, yeah, Rush Tribute. Uh, we did it for about two years. And like I said, I can't believe that, uh, you know, I left the scene for a bit and come back and I'm in the Kiss tribute now. That was, uh, that might have been Rock and Heaven or an old uh, Falcon's Nest, remember Fal yeah, Bedrock? Remember, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was there and uh, man, the people would flock in, eh? Kodiaks and uh, Lumberjackets. <laughs> That's all I remember, Full House in Scarborough. Scarborough Tuxedo. Yeah, it was, it was good days, good days. Yeah. Chatterboxevents.ca, go. Okay, May 14th, Opera House, celebrating Toronto's finest indie bands, Homegrown Night. We got Plate on Flannel, we got Screw, we got Little Sunday, One Ugly Cowboy, and Affinity. Five bands, incredible night of music. We hope to see everyone down here and supporting these great local bands that deserve to play this huge venue with the great lights and sound and with the support of the city. Okay, so we hope to see you there. Tell me more about this one. Uh, well, this is a song I uh, did about a year ago, maybe. Oh yeah, I can hear Phil now. Yeah, Phil, uh, Phil Narrow joined me for a duet here. He's awesome, we'll watch his background. Anyways, yeah, it's a song called All I Need, and uh, I'm still recording some original stuff, having some fun. Go in the studio whenever I got an idea and I finish it. And where do you do it? Steve Sherman, great studio, uh, great engineer, great guitar player, great a musician. He's got a studio down on Kingston Road. Awesome. Anybody wants to record quickly, that's the place to go. Right Good on. guy. But yeah, you know, still doing the original stuff for fun too. Obviously, it's a tougher business now. Uh, while doing the Kiss tribute and while trying to promote live music in Toronto. Yeah, man. <laughs> got a lot on my plate. Oh, I like what you're doing. Crazy guy. <laughs> Cool. Solo. So who's that? Vasilakos. Uh, Pablo's old bazooki player for many, many years. And what did he do with Phil X? Uh, actually, I think he's Phil X's cousin. Oh, right on. Yeah. Pablo singing. It's a song we co-wrote on, I um, can't remember which album it's on. I'm bad. I should know which one. He's got, uh, we actually co-wrote two songs together, and uh, this is called This Time. It's a little bit different than my usual stuff, but believe it or not, you can still hear the rock and roll melody in there as far as I'm concerned. That's cool. It's melodic. So you've got two songwriting credits on this album? Uh, two different albums. Oh, two different albums. Yeah. Albums. Awesome. Actually, Pavel's still considering shopping this song around to other artists. It's very, it's very melodic. Right. changed the name in the recording process it was just the, the, it was that era when uh, everything was switching from uh, you know analog real tapes to digital so so you did this on two inch tape yeah yeah that's uh, that was the standard back then 24 track recording studios you had the two inch tape which cost like you can get three songs on one friggin roll and wow. you have to you know there was no 80 takes you only had one take hmm. everyone knows all the older musicians know the, the time frame we grew up in and what a beautiful process it was to record 
uh, you know, you had to you had to rehearse and you had to know each other, all your little nuances and get it right. It wasn't like you know, let's record it ten times, we'll edit it later. It's awesome. It was great days, man. It's too bad the young musicians don't know what it was like. Mm. Not to take away from what they're uh, experiencing now, but it was a different uh, canvas. It was a different canvas mm -hmm. we had to work with. Good times, though. Crank it up. Crank it up. This a song called Next. Okay, it's on 1994. Wall of Silence. He was a good drummer, man. I haven't talked to Scott in a while. 